This video is an interview with one of the major innovators of surfing objects on waves of air, but first an introduction. David Ehrenstein is so modest that I corresponded with him for years before I knew that it was Dr. David Ehrenstein. He's made model airplanes forever and is now an aerospace engineer. He still makes truly magnificent model flying machines. Successful walk-along gliders had always been of the flying wing variety until David figured out what he had to do to get a traditional looking plane with a tail section to fly as a walk-along glider. That opened up a whole new branch of flying. He also organizes walk-along gliding events where people careen through obstacle courses or fly missions. David brought his sons Jesse and Zevi, who wowed us with their flying skill, to St. Louis where we showed people how to fly at the Science Center. Everybody else is flying flying wings for walk-along gliders. Tell me about how you, uh, you know, dared to put a tail, how the gall <laughs> to, put, to a put a tail on it. Well, okay. Okay, well, for, first of all, it's worth mentioning that somebody patented gliders that are essentially walk-along gliders in 1955, and his sketches show a tail. The Joseph Grant. That's right. Now, we don't know of any we sales. Do, we don't even know if his flew successfully. We only know that made the sketches. We don't really know what he did with it. But I, I actually didn't know about that until you sent me the information about the patent. My path to doing what we do is that I heard of Tyler McCready's concept and invention sometime around 1990, and it sounded cool, so I thought I'd try it. I, I have been active building free flight indoor and outdoor, primarily rubber-powered models for most of my life. So I used the building technology that was familiar to me, which is balsa wood and tissue paper. Before I built anything, I took a, an indoor hand launch glider, which is designed to, to be very stable in free flight, but it has a, a long tail moment arm, and I tried to fly it on a board and promptly planted it into the ground, or very decisively uh, <laughs> nosedive. And I realized that's because with the, the wing and the tail flying in front of the board, the tail was getting more upwashed than the wing because it was closer to the board. So the logical step was, okay, let's try a flying wing. I built a couple of stick and tissue flying wings, about 16, 18 inch wingspan, and started taking them to model airplane meets with, with me, uh, indoor meets, and people had a lot of fun with them. Um, I could fly them with a board. Some guys learned to fly them on their forehead or hands. Um, and that was it for me for a long time. That, that was around 1990. Early 2000s, my kids were getting old enough to enjoy model airplanes and were coming to model meets with me. So I thought, you know, to make it more fun for them, what, it's time to try this again. So I built a couple of flying wings again. That was fun. And they, they were kind of hard to steer, so I experimented with putting vertical surfaces on them. But kids like things that look like real airplanes. I, I'd always thought that maybe one with a tail would work if just that you need the tail close coupled to minimize the, the flow difference between where the wing is and where the tail is, and even high like a T-tail. So the traditional free flight model, wing, tail, far apart, there, there's no way to put a board under it and get the same amount of upflow in both places. But it makes sense that if you put the wing and the tail closer together, and maybe even stagger vertically where the tail is higher than the wing, and the board is here, you get your wing a lot closer to the board and get much more equal upflow on both surfaces, which means much less trim change between free glide and gliding in front of the board. Um, that was just an idea that I had when I first did uh, the flying wings uh, around 1990, but then when I, when I tried it again, uh, more recently, it, you know, it was worth a try, so, so I tried it. I built a, a semi-scale model of a Northrop Scorpion with kind of 1950s military jet with a, with a small, close-coupled, high tail. So it had all the, all the right ingredients that I thought were, were necessary, and sure enough, it, it flew. It flew very well. I, I still have it. Um, I, I built it, I think, around 2003, and now it's 2010, and it's been through a lot, but... <laughs> The good thing about these scratch-built balsa wood models yeah. is you turn them from a pile of sticks into an airplane once to build them, you can do it again if you have to <laughs> to repair them. There is a large hall next to the cafeteria where I work 
which is at Hawker Beechcraft Company. And I, I used to fly, I do fly rubber powered models there. But it's a little bit frustrating because it's drafty and, and if you get close to the ceiling there are always hazards of hanging up. And, and when, I, when I took a walk along glider there and spent my lunch break fly, flying missions back and forth across this hall and st strafing some of the constructs that are at one end of it and having fun and not winding up a rubber band for the whole time, I realized that there was something good here. And then I started inviting some of my friends to come and co-workers. And then we started having informal meets where we would have obstacle courses. See, the rubber powered free flight that I do is all about duration. But with walk-along gliding, you can do more task-oriented things that are fun. And it's fun, you can share models, it doesn't matter who built them because the, the skill of flying them is a a big part of it. So you can share airplanes, they're all very very low labor hours required to construct so you don't mind if they get broken and it's just a lot of fun. And my son Jesse would come to some of these meets and participate and about the second season that he was coming he started winning all the events. We had to have an altitude contest just so that the grown-ups would have a chance. Uh, now he's getting tall enough, I don't think that will help anymore. We've done a lot of creative things, obstacle course, passing the glider back and forth between two pilots, seeing how many times you can do that in a, in a minute, a strike mission where you, where you fly the length of the hall, make target passes, fly back, make a carrier landing, uh, all, all kinds of fun things you can do. So you're this Jesse guy we keep hearing about. Tell us about your airplane adventures. When I was really little, I started flying model airplanes with my dad, like rubber powered. And then he started making these walk-along gliders, so I flew those, and I, it took a while, but I eventually became okay at it. And um, now I suppose I can fly them pretty well. They're very fun. There's also some contests that my dad has at his job, and I go there, and I win most of them, which is fun. <laughs> I like the long-range strike where you go and you bomb the target and then you come back and you land on the aircraft carrier. I think that's very fun. And I also like the one where, like, I forget what it's called, you have to stay up for two minutes and then if you stay up for two minutes then you qualify for a speed race. And I like that. It's pretty fun. And basically I like all of them, you know, except the altitude contest. <laughs> But you're getting taller now, so maybe you'll get your revenge. Yeah, I'm still not quite as tall as most of the grown-ups, though. But in a little while, maybe I will. The first airplane I made was a B-17, and it has four propellers that spin, and it flies pretty well. And where did we get the idea for the for the spinning propellers? Uh, Mike Thompson. He made a, a little foamy with a little spinning propeller, so we got that idea. And then I also made a... Uh, three-dimensional F9F Cougar and for that one contest where you stay up for two minutes then you qualify for the speed race I flew that for two minutes and that was kind of difficult because it just goes so fast. Well thank you very much for helping us with the events these past couple of days you were right there with us. You're welcome yeah it was fun I enjoyed uh, teaching everyone how to fly your plane and I think hopefully at least one person that I taught can do it okay now. I'll say a little bit about Zev, and you know, okay. when when his when Jesse would come to the glider meets at, at work, Zevi would come too, and um, Zevi liked to fly the the Z Surfer. Um, it's a it's a a stick and, and plastic covering version that we built. The classic foam flying wing, very similar to I, I think the one that Tyler McCready was showing on TV, flying. And so that, I think, is one of the first ones that Zevi was able to fly when he was quite young, five or six. Start walking with me. Keep the nose down so it doesn't stall. Let's get under it. She's in the Stay with it. Stay with it. See how it's climbing? Good. Yeah, kind of whatever you find on the That looks good. This girl has it. Look at that. She's got it. Yeah, have you ever seen this player?